Hi, this is Tim Place. I'm here to give you a quick introduction to the Max Test package for um, automated testing in Cycling 74's Max. The test package uh, called Max Test is in uh, GitHub. And if you go to GitHub, uh, there's a bunch of information here. You can clone the repository if you're familiar with Git. If you're not familiar with Git but would still like to use it, you can come over and check out the release download the release and everything is ready to go for you. So either when you download this or you clone the repository, you will end up with a package called max test, which you can put in your max seven packages folder, and then it'll be ready to ready to go. Uh, if you did uh, clone it from the GitHub repository, instead of downloading the release, you'll need to build the Oscar extension either with an Xcode project on the Mac or with a Visual Studio 2013 project on Windows. Going back to our package, there are some patchers which are included, which are some example tests from Cycling 74's uh, barrage of automated tests. So we can look at these to get an idea of how a test patcher is structured. When we open up a test patcher, we get what is a patcher? And the key components of that patcher are that we have a load bang to trigger whatever needs to happen as soon as the patcher is opened. Then we have test assertions, which is this test assert object. Test assert takes an argument, which is the name of the assertion. And then we send it a one if the test passes or a zero if it does not pass. And then we have a test terminate object, which tells us that the test is done. In an automated setting, that is critical so that the test harness knows that it can close the patcher and complete uh, everything that it's doing. So if we just look at this patch real quick, we have a load bang. The load bang ultimately is reading a file into a buffer that's 2000 milliseconds long. Then we're checking to see, is that buffer still 2000 milliseconds after it's read this file? We've used the test equals object to compare this number with this number. And then uh, it turned the toggle to one and passed it to the test assertion. Why did we use test equals here? We use test equals instead of the is equals to object due to floating point round off errors, which could cause uh, assertions to fail even when the result is correct. So for integers, you can still use the is equals to object. We can also look at an example that happens in the audio world. Here's an example where what happens is the load bang turns on the DAC. All of these signals run through their patchers. We use a test sample object. This is similar to the snapshot object, except that what it will take is the first sample of the first vector and return that. Then we compare this number, again using test equals, and it goes to a bunch of assertions. Bearing in mind that we have right to left ordering, the assertion on the left will run last, and so after this assertion has run, it terminates the test. So these test patchers are very handy. They're a very nice way, even if you're not automating anything, to verify that the system is working correctly, and they're a great way for us at Cycling74, if you wanted to provide us with some sort of bug report to show us uh, how something is not functioning the way that you believe that it should be. However, we can also automate everything. So if we quit Max and we go ahead and we drop into the terminal, we can change directories into our package in the Ruby folder. And we can use this Ruby test script to run all of the tests that are in Max's search path. Okay, when I run the, the Ruby test script with no arguments, it tells me that I need to have an argument. And that argument is the path to the folder that contains the Max application. So for Max 7, we'll want to have something like this. For Max 6.1, it will look like this. And then we also have an example of what it would look like on Windows. So what's happening now 
is that this test script has launched Max. It then established communication with the, um, with Max using the Oscar extension. And now we have to wait for the database to finish building. That's because we're using the database in Max in order to find out uh, what patchers are in the search path. Once it found it, it's now executing all of them. You saw it open and close a whole bunch of windows quickly. And now it gives us the results. So we executed eight tests, 38 assertions, and they all passed. If something had happened while it was running and Max crashed, or we wanted to see the results later after multiple test runs, uh, we can do that. All those test results are in a database and the path to the database is listed here on the command line. So let's make a test and see what it looks like if one fails. We'll start max, then we'll make a load bang, oops, a load bang object so that we can get everything started. We need this critical test terminate object without which the entire um, testing process will come to a halt when we run the script, if this is not called. Then we need a test assert. And I'm just going to call it assertion A for now. So the load bang will do something, um, we'll do something really trivial so that we can see how this works. Add these two integers together. In this case, we want to compare the result of this to something expected. And we don't need to use test equals because this is an integer comparison. So that's assertion A. Then let's do something for assertion B. This number be seven point one four. Okay. One thing I like to do in all these tests, and we saw that in the examples, is that I like to put a toggle in here so that I can open the patcher and see visually whether or not an assertion is passing. So we'll go ahead and do that. And after the final assertion is run, we need to terminate the test. So we've made our patcher. If I double click the load bang to fire it off and see what happens, we can see in fact that is equals to does not match exactly 7.14 due to that floating point round off error. I'm going to leave this here so that we can see the failure uh, when we run from the script. And so now I'm going to save my patcher. And the key to this is that we need to save the patcher in the search path. And we need to save the patcher with the extension that is used for test patchers. So that is to say, we're going to call this one example.maxtest.maxpat. And that will give us what we need. Okay, so close that. I'll quit max, and we can come back to the Ruby script and run it again. Okay, so now we can see that we've executed nine tests with 40 assertions and one assertion failed, and we get a report about everything that happened here. So now we can go in and try to assess what went wrong. I hope that's been a helpful introduction, and you'll get yourself into running tests and making test patchers. Have fun!